Okay. Now for the higher level goalkeepers, now we can start to introduce, if you want, with the ball in our hand, working on our high diving. Let's go back and we'll introduce our poles and the rope again. All right, we have a footwork element, which is still different yet this time. All right, where we've got to make ourselves laterally go, we're still working uh, laterally, but we're going to increase the vertical work. So we're going to move out a yard, back two yards, out a yard, back two yards. Ball in our hand the whole time. Catch a good catching position with the arms, the elbows tucked in, the arms out away from you. Okay, you want it out away, head height. Make sure those elbows don't get flared out. We don't want them flared out. We want them tucked in here as we go through the footwork. And then I'll just step, take the ball, push it out, dive over the rope. So we start from here. Like such. Okay? One more time. Like such. The biggest key to this, the very biggest key to this, all right, in terms of your safety, is making sure that the ball gets pushed down and away and pinned to the floor, and the ball is the first thing that hits the floor before any part of your body, okay? While doing this, there is absolutely no pounding on any part of my body, whether it be my shoulders, my elbows, my hips, it's outsides of my knee, outsides of my shin, anything. Everything gets put into the ball as it hits the floor. And you could do this five, ten times each side in a session. Okay, so those are some ways that we can work on our diving, all right, both high and low, even your collapsed diving, getting down quick, things like that. Now let's say uh, you want to work on crosses. We say, how do I work on crosses if there's nobody to serve me a ball? There's got to be somebody to serve me a ball, whether it be a trainer, a field player, a parent throwing a ball, whatever. Not necessarily the case. You may not be able to work with a ball while doing this, but that's not to say you can't work on the techniques, all right? key to this is really to use your imagination while you're doing this, all right? The imagination, the mind, is a very strong tool, all right, in terms of the way you work. It's been proven through science, uh, starting with the Russians back in the 70s and ongoing uh, today, that the mind is actually much more useful than actual the physical work that you do, if you know how to use the mind correctly. So what we'll do is we'll just use our imagination in working for crosses, but we are still going to concentrate on all the key elements in dealing with crosses. Number one, you need to not just be moving up when you take a cross, but you also need to be moving forward when you take a cross, up and through the ball at the time of catching. Number two, your catching point cannot be back here behind your head, all right? Ideally, you would like it out in front of your face here, out in front of my head. If I took a straight line and went straight up from my head, my hand should be out in front of it. Sometimes we'll be up, straight up above our heads, but ideally we'd like to be out in front. Now, every single ball that comes from your left side, you should be coming off your right leg, all right? If the balls that come from your left side and you come up with your left leg, it has a tendency, body mechanics and physics, to turn your body away from the ball. It's a proven fact, there's nothing you can do about it, it's simple, it's simple physics. That that motion wants to turn your body away, that means you gotta reach back. All right, whereas if we come off our right leg for every ball that comes from our left side, now it wants to turn our body into the path of the ball where our hips and shoulders are turning, squaring up to that ball, reaching out ahead of it. All right, every ball that comes from our right side, the converse is true. We want to be coming off our left leg, so it's rotating our body into the path of the ball, hips and shoulders, squaring up with the ball, and we can take it. But again, all right, using our imagination, imagine any kind of cross you want, whether it be a cross, whether it be a corner kick, they could be flat, they could be lofted, they could come in slower, they could come in faster. Imagine every single different possibility, balls with curves, whatever, all right? You work both sides, you change it up every time, and you just make sure that your timing and your approach and your technique are all in concert with the imagination and the, co the quality of the serve, like this. Let's say the ball's coming from my right side out here. I'm using my imagination. Maybe it's a cross coming in. I'm here, the cross comes in. I sit, I sit, I time it, and I go. 
boom, all right? Using my technique, making sure I'm driving up, I'm going up into the sky, but I'm also moving forward through the ball. Same thing from this side here. Okay, I'm here, the cross comes in, I see it, I'm ready, and I go. Boom, all right? And I'm ready to distribute, like that. So use your imagination to concentrate on your technique, all right? To inform the technique, make sure you're moving, driving up through the ball, but also forward through the ball. You should never just be going straight up because any kind of contact that happens between you and a defender, or you and a, especially you and a forward, all right, they're moving through, you're going straight up, their momentum takes them into you, and you lose, all right? So forward momentum is key. So these are some of the things, both from the physical uh, standpoint, as well as from the technical standpoint, that you guys can be doing all by yourself without any uh, trainer, without another player, without a parent, without anything. All you really need is yourself, you need a ball, and you need some creativity, and most of all, you need the will to get better. So hopefully you could take the elements that you've seen here in these episodes, uh, put them all together, and allow yourself, give yourself you know, a two or three day program per week uh, training session for 60 or 90 minutes when you're just working on your own. All right, different elements. Incorporate all the different elements a little bit in each session so it's not just one day of total jumping, one day of total diving. You do a little bit of each, maybe, you know, you do 20 minutes of jumping and then you do 20 or 30 minutes of abdominal work and then you do another 10 minutes of catching and then you do another 10 or 15 minutes of diving and then uh, you do work on some crossing using your imagination, whatever the case may be. The next day you come out, you do different jumping, you do different abdominal work. Um, you do different diving exercises, okay? But hopefully this can get you through at least two or three days per week uh, for 60 to 90 minutes a session, all right? Really, it's about your will. It's about how much do you want to get better uh, and how much, you know, what kind of a level you're trying to attain in your goalkeeping and what you're, what you're willing to do to achieve that level. All right, good luck, all the best.